blessing.
Hey, uh, look like everybody, look like everybody got flights and stuff and traveling. I was waiting on, uh, some other, you know, regulars to come in the room, but, um, like it's going to be us, wise. <coughs> A little like. Yeah. So, what you think about the topic? Well, bro, I think uh, I mean the topic it really speaks for itself. Masculinity isn't toxic; it's lacking in the black family. And we can see that on our everyday occurrence in our neighborhoods, in our own homes, uh, most of the time. So, it's definitely something that's. Uh, that can't be denied. Definitely that. Yeah, we hear this word a lot, you know, toxic masculinity. And uh, it's really one of them trigger words, you know what I'm saying? It's like, as soon as they get corrected, it's like, oh, it's toxic masculinity. Right. Right, right. Let's see what's what. Anybody raising their hand? Anybody trying to speak on the topic? What do the people want to say? Yeah, y'all know what it is. It's um biblical smoke. You know they don't uh, allow you to follow the club no more. So you know follow the speakers that are on stage. Also uh, hashtag biblical smoke on Twitter. Let us know your thoughts. Masculinity isn't toxic. It's lacking. In the black family. You do want to hear what people have to say. So if y'all have the ability. Raise your hand. Let us know your thoughts on. Masculinity. And the toxicity of it. This society said. That's a word right wise. Toxicity. Yeah, yeah, we just made it up if it ain't. <laughs> they, 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 get, they, they get it. Yeah, I seen a post the other day. It said uh this this man and woman was uh dating and the dude asked the, the woman to marry her and instead of a ring he gave her a receipt for a fully paid seventy thousand dollar student loan debt. I think I saw that. I didn't get all the details on it though. Like, yeah, she said. She said that's that's fine, but I I, I still require a ring. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it was yeah. like, what is she? A ungrateful. B wrong. You know, they gave them a little multiple choice. Like this girl's dumb and ungrateful. You do cancel all your debt, and you still want a a, a ring on your finger. Like the tangible ring is is worth more than the debt. The hell out of here. Well, nine times out of ten, that's what it is in our community. They want the ring. That's why. That's why our sisters be the most engaged and the most divorced. Right. With with the lowest marriage rate. Everybody be everybody be about to get married. <laughs> Right, or engaged for like five, six years, ten years. With kids. Yeah, that, that's our community, man. But that, that goes to show you the lack of uh, masculinity. You know, um, 
get, 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 go to get corrected on it or men that want to establish them, establish their homes and, and really build something. You know, they looked at it as though, you know, they're being too, too, too masculine. Uh, it's toxic for, for you to, for you to want to order your home in the right manner. So. Communities are jacked up, man. Yeah. Well, that's because um, the the way that the houses were ordered back then, like in the uh, in the forties, fifties, and you know, early I'm gonna say early sixties, you know, the households was ran by the man. We were we had higher marriage rates. As soon as uh, the old civil rights movement came, that's when everything took a turn. Right. That's when old Willie Lynch kicked in. <laughs> what I'm tripping on is how they going to have toxic masculinity without actual masculinity in our neighborhood? Mm-hmm. That's A couple of people showing up. We got some people on stage. We got some people on stage. So uh, let's go ahead with it. So we have Lydia on stage. Lydia, masculinity isn't toxic. It's lacking. What do you think? Lydia, you there? Lydia, you there? Something might be going over Lydia's microphone. I can't hear. Her. All right, what about you, Derek? Um, I mean, uh, I, I think masculinity, masculinity definitely is not toxic. The black community is definitely black. From, uh, you sound very far away and muffled. Is it better? Is it better now? Yeah, if you speak up, I can hear you better. So what was you saying? No, no, I was saying, uh, no, I don't think masculinity is toxic, and I, I do indeed think it is lacking in a black, in a black family, because of course you know, uh, past, I don't know how many generations off the top of the head to be precise, but for many generations we've been, you know, kind of uh, emasculated for <laughs> certain reasons and. Um, given that effeminate spirit that, you know, scripture says not to um, embody. So I think we definitely need that more so in the black. Right, right. So why do you think that uh, masculinity is coined as toxic nowadays? Uh, you know, for the sake of uh, societal norms that are being pushed on us with, you know, um, certain movements and, you know, for this, <laughs> I mean, to break it down to a, a certain root is to fulfill scripture. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, James, what are your thoughts on the topic of discussion? Um, let's see. I would say, I mean, masculinity is, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's a threat. Right? It's, I mean, the main thing is like, I mean, if anybody's paying attention, like in the Bible, it says what, what's good will be bad and what's bad will be good. It's just like, you know, the primordial order, like, you know, it's God, then the man, then the woman, and then the children. But obviously if I can shake up that, that, that ladder, I can create my own. So 
I mean, and then this this uh, toxic masculinity. It's, it's like, I mean, I, it sounds it sounds really stupid. It just sounds like um, it sounds like a like a conspiracy theorist button. It's like it's something that you can hurry up and press when oh shoot the conversation ain't going my way. Like let me hurry up and throw that in real quick. Then it's almost like that. Oh snap! Like bro, like you being a little you being a little you lit right now. It's like it's not that. It's just. Even telling the truth is dangerous sometimes, and them trying to slide and try to make being masculine is a bad thing. Obviously, you know, you know, it's it's a trick, it's a joke, it's just a weak one. It's just that if the masses follow it, then I mean, I mean, unfortunately, that's going to be the norm. So what you're saying is, toxic masculinity is nothing but a trigger word that's used when men stand up and be men. Period. Hmm. Okay. It's a it's a it's a quick button I could just toss at you if you making a if you making a point and I feel uncomfortable. Like boom, I can toss that in real quick. It's it's gonna shake up the room. Everybody's gonna be looking around like yo. Like I mean, I and I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say there's there's not those individuals who do the most, but I'm just saying in general, let's be serious. Like let's let's keep it one hundred. Well, when you look at it, you know. Jerks have been around for, I mean, decades. Years. <laughs> jerks yeah. are always going to be jerks, but we've never classified a jerk as being masculine, mm -hmm. or we've never classified a jerk as being an alpha male. We've never, ever, ever classified that as that. But nowadays, they're trying to blend the two together, saying, "Yes, sir, ski. Oh, if you if you act like this, or if you're a jerk, then that's toxic masculinity. When it's never been that ever before." Ever. Ever. It's just that we're going to toss them all in the pot. The good and the bad. As long as it doesn't, if it doesn't fit this agenda, then it's got to go. I don't care how good it sounds. Because if you really, if you really know, if you really know, it's like a family, especially when it comes to a black family. I mean, you have your, you have the father in the house, the mom in the house, children doing what they're supposed to do. Like it's that's a hard team to be, and everybody's on a, like on the same page, doing what they're supposed to do, obeying like following following that order or like obeying the law. Man, that's man, that's a that's a tough team to dominate right there. It's too structured. It's way too structured. Mm, very very powerful point, uh, Lydia. You got your mic straight yet? going on y'all hey what's going on e you know i'm a child come in this thing yeah it looked like uh look like people scared to 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 talk about the topic e yeah i know i know they don't want to talk about that you know you know Matt, you know, the, the mass, toxic masculinity that whole that whole title is simply just made to keep niggas in order keep niggas in line and stay beta soft and weak that's the whole purpose of toxic masculinity because there's no such thing as toxic femininity. I get to hear about that toxic femininity. I hear about that, you know. There's another trigger word now. A black man becomes unreasonable or uncontrollable. He is, he is deemed toxic. That's the new manipulation that these sisters have learned from their uh, right counterpart female. It's a new tactic now. You got, you know, they call it the manosphere now. You got brothers rising up now. They ain't having it. You got brothers from a biblical perspective rising up saying they ain't having it. You got men from a worldly perspective come rising up saying they ain't having it. You know, it's just not happening. They're losing the sisters is losing the battle. You know, so I just figure you put on clubhouse and talk about it. You know, they so you think that's happen. the reason. You think that's the reason why when you say uh, when when you ask uh, a lot of sisters, hey, why did uh, why did your relationship not work out? And they just say, oh, it was toxic. Yeah, it's just a cop out. That's a cop out of saying, you know, either she picked the wrong dude or she wasn't meant to be picked in the first place or it didn't go her way. It, it, it always, it's, it's, it's pretty much an unaccountable title term that they use for lack of accountability. You know, and they'll, they'll, they'll mess around you asking them, and how many, who ended it? Who ended it? You ask them questions like, who ended it? Or, you know, how many toxic relationships have you been in? They'll tell you more than one. 
Yeah. But the key, what's the common denominator in those types of relationships? <laughs> you. You know, when you, bring, when you present that, then you become either homosexual or you become toxic yourself. The moment you present these facts, logic, you know, unemotional, you know, that's when you become a problem. Also happens, but there's a, but there, this is some of the whole toxic masculinity thing. It's simply a ploy to silence and censor men from speaking, from being men, from being who we are, who we've been for centuries. Men don't change, women do. And never change. Men are always the same. That's why, that's why it takes a man to raise one, because men know men. And it takes a man to guide a woman to pick a man, because again, men know men. Women do not know men. So make, so they always have poor choices in picking them. So. We'll see how this comes. We'll see how this topic goes. We'll see what happens. We'll see what we'll see what comes up to me. Mm. You know, I love this type of stuff. So we'll see what happens. Yes, sir. Very um, very good things, man. Cause uh, we have we have it known that um, toxic masculinity is a key word used for cop outs. It's a key word used for when things don't go their way in arguments. So we definitely want to hear from the people. We want to hear from y'all what y'all got to say about the toxic masculinity. What you hey. got to say, Wise? Oh yes, yes, sir. Now make sure, make sure when they throw that word misogyny around, I throw misandry out there too. That word is very, very rare now. Misandry. Put it up there too. You will hear misogyny. True. What's that word uh, that he used? Misogynist? Misandry. Misandry. Yeah, because everybody knows misogyny. They throw that word around like like uh, like frisbees. But misandry? Uh, nobody Very uncommon. Uses that. Very uncommon. Look that word up. Just see what it means. Misandrist, misandry. Look it up. Just see what it means. Hey, you Buka, look up Misandry. Yes, sir. Misandry, definition, dislike of, contempt for, or ingrained prejudice against men. Damn. Wow. Dang. There you go. Very uncommon word that I will be doing, that I will we need to make very popular. Very, very uncommon now. word that feels very common in our in our in our day and age right now. Yes, sir. Yes, it does. It's ingrained. Yeah, it says ingrained. That means it's innately there. Even when they think it's not there, it's there. Back of their mind, since the Garden of Eden, been there. Envy, dislike of men. Oof. So you mean say? A lot of these uh, single bitter women is raising misandrists. Pretty much. <laughs> wow. I can get that music for 1644. You can get it. All I got the time. Biblical, too. You know, they always say the apple don't fall too far from the tree and it comes to fathers, but you barely hear about women. You don't want to hear that terminology used for sisters. You usually hear it term for men in general. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. But there's, there's a feminist, feminine term for it as well. Biblical, biblically feminine term for it. Yeah. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 44. Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. There you go. Keep going. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband and her children. There you go. The hates her husband. Loatheth is a term for loathe, like you hate. Hates her husband and hates her children. And children goes into a variety of things. It goes into women going out there and, you know, what do you call it, um, laying around and having multiple, multitudes of abortions and so forth. But it goes into all of that. So... As the mother, so is the daughter. That's not something you really hear much, often, but the Bible definitely records it. Mm. It's for black and that goes for black and so-called Hispanic. I mean, it's the same thing to me. It goes for, it goes across the board with them too. Hey, why do y'all think that is? Though, do y'all think that's for the sake of uh, uh, 
society to dishonor like the covering of the head like what is it Corinthians is that Corinthians like 11 3 I'm sorry, say again I hear you sound muffled say again sir. oh no I was asking why do you think that's why society's like kind of perpetuating that and trying to push that as the norm I was asking do you think it's kind of to dishonor uh like the order of the head that Corinthians 11 3 that's the question glad you asked are you familiar with um God and the beat and what happened in those two you familiar with those two I'm sorry I didn't catch that I'm sorry I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna New York I'm gonna New York man it's loud out here are you familiar with this history of God of God and the beating the Adam and Eve are you familiar with the history with the oh absolutely Satan did all right, oh. so what is the first thing what was the first thing Satan what was the first thing Satan attacked in the black family? Who did he what did he who did he use? He used the woman, but however what? it was still Adam's fault. It was still oh, Adam's fault. No, 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 no. I'm not taking it from him. But who did he approach first? Is what I'm saying. I'm not taking yeah. I'm not pointing I'm not pointing fingers. No, they no, did no, that too. Like they did that too. Absolutely. They did the same thing and they didn't get them nowhere. So I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just saying no. who did he approach first? No, yeah, absolutely. He he approached woman because could do. Very good. Now, get um, Revelation 12. And you tell me what nation this happens to be. Revelation 12 and 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, when you read this great red dragon, excuse me, excuse me, when you read this great red dragon, um, damn, that won't fell out. When you read this great red dragon, it's referring, to, it's referring to a particular nation or a beast. It's not referring to an actual dragon deceiving people. It's referring to a, a nation of people. So we one more time. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. This, this, that, is, this, is, this, is, this is home. This is the after. So um, you read about the, how he's ruling and so forth from verses 1 to 8. But then verse 9 goes into his fall. So this great red dragon fell. Red, you know. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Oh. Which did. Why do we call that old serpent? Because the same spirit that deceived Eve in the garden and turned her and turned and used her to go against a man is the same nation that was a certain nation of people today that are used to do the exact same thing. Right? Because it's called call it called um read again, called what? Old serpent That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Right. Devil meaning receiver and Satan meaning adversary. Means whatever God says to do, this nation opposes it or goes against it. Keep going. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And his messengers. So now, so let's examine, for example, let's examine the black family structure being destroyed. In, um... Derek, when you examine the uh, women's, the feminist movement, who were the founders of that? Back in the MLS. What nation were the founders of that? Uh, nation of, uh, nation of Christians. Uh, I hear you say that. Uh, I said, if I'm, if I'm correct, I would believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, uh, the Edomite, Edomites, Edomites. Who, who, who's that? I don't know who that is. Who, who that? You got to clarify who that is. I don't know who that is. I don't think it's out there. I hear you now. You mean, say again, who, who's Edomites? Who's that? No, you, you want today's? Well, yeah, today's time, today's okay. time. Yeah, today's time, yeah. Yeah, yeah Caucasians, white there you go. That's it. That's the more modern term for those who don't know. So when you examine the feminist movement, the women's suffrage movement, you had like women like the forerunners of feminism. You had Amelia Bloomer, you had Susan B. Anthony, 
You had Katie Stanton and you had Lucy Stone. Those are the four mothers of feminism. Those four. Leah Bloomberg came with the pants. Lucy, Katie Stanton, I think, was a supporter. Susan B. Anthony was on, a, was on a coin at one point in time. So these are the forerunners of the feminist movement leading up to women's rights and so forth, and women's petitioning for equal rights and so forth. And they, they, they introduced it to Frederick Douglass. They introduced these ideas to um, Harriet Tubman, who also became a feminist later on. So that, that is the key factor or common denominator to the feminist movement and the disorder in black families, where they basically push women to believe that they were slaves to their husbands. Because the main forerunners, forerunners of uh, feminist movement were either upper class or middle class white women. And they made that issue they had with their men, that issue with, with our, the, the black woman's issue. And the black woman was a slave along with her man, but they got confused and they used the black woman as members to further their agenda. And that is how the black woman or the black family became pretty much in, um, unstable. And they introduced that nonsense into the black households. And of course, going to the men, the male side of those women, you had them introduced to us, of course, the welfare, the food stamps, public assistance, the mass incarcerations, throwing brothers in jail for small petty, for small petty crimes, criminal leasing system, things like that. So they removed the man from the house. In order to get welfare, you had to have the man not in the house. You know, you have a thing called the WIC today, WIC, which means women's infants and children. When a man is not around, you can get WIC. If the man isn't around or you're a single mother, you get more money in your food stamps. I know there's some experience. So these are things that were pretty much instituted to, or used to further separate the back, black family or the black woman no longer needs a man at home. And of course, you have the, the main runner up is child support as well, which is used, um, occasionally used by our sisters to pretty much exploit the man and rob him clean. Or in some instances, used because the man is generally an asshole and doesn't take care of his kids. But you have instances where the woman is using it or exploiting it to make you into, you know, for her pockets. But it's also abused as well in some instances, furthering the division of black families. So the common denominator behind a black family household being destroyed and so forth is this race of people. That's that same great red dragon you read about in Revelation 12 that deceives the whole world. But there's that democracy, that feminism, all is used to destroy the world, cause division. That's why the countries, that's why the countries don't want it around. Well, not, not all, but some. But that's pretty much a common denominator. That same spirit you know, that was in the garden is it was pretty much physically incarnated as people or a nation on this earth today. That's why it says that old serpent. But that same serpent that deceived the black woman in the garden is the same serpent, male or female people that deceived the woman today. And so that pretty much y'all, y'all pretty much know. If y'all saying eating my son, y'all I'm, I'm preaching, preaching to the choir. I know who this is what I'm talking about. You already know what's going on. Once you say eating my sound, I'm, tra- I'm talking to myself. You know, I know what I'm talking about. But hopefully those who are listening understand what I'm talking about too. All right. And it's Good crazy. Night. It's crazy how they do the exchange. It's almost like that. I mean, it's almost like it's almost like someone being at court. It's like if you give him up, I mean, I mean, you will cut you a good deal. So the more you push him out or that man out, the more, I mean, we'll put something, we'll, you know, we'll line your pockets. We'll get you right. So instead of relying on that man, you're going to rely on this man, which is a system. Pretty much. Pretty it's much. Crazy. Yeah. And, and a lot of our sisters, they know that. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them know that. And yet they still, because of the power that they're, the power they're given behind it, you know, it's like that power that Eve was offered in the garden. You know, you could be gods. They're like, oh man, if I get this power up, I won't be a god. I, I want to be a man too. Because, you know, this, this comedian, <laughs> he said, he said, he, he was joking, but he made a valid point to an extent. He said, women are miserable. <laughs> he said, the only joy women have in this world is when they, is when they try to be or think like males. That's why they don't get along. They always fight among themselves. Not all the time, but he made that joke. And it was funny to me because he was going into the, the, the misery of our sisters and so forth and how they always compete with each other. Or whatever, whatever they're put into, I've experienced this firsthand. Not all of them. But whenever they're put into positions of power, you know, they abuse it. So I'm in my mic. All right, all right. We have uh, Delisha on stage. Delisha, to- uh, masculinity isn't toxic. It's lacking in the black family. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I agree. I don't think it's toxic. I feel like um, a man belongs in a family, and we need a man to, like, lead us as females, you know? lessen the load and it's also it's well yeah <laughs> i don't want to put my foot in my mouth 
No, it ain't putting your foot in your mouth. So I got a question. Why do you think so many women use this term toxic masculinity as a uh, a way of making men feel ashamed for being masculine? Why do you think that is right now? I don't, I think it's the media. I really don't think it's, the, like it's an individual female I feel like it's the media that portray things and sometimes we go along with the media you know well I'm gonna say this not sometimes y'all go along with the media all the time you go along with the media and I'll give you an example have you uh, been paying attention to the internet lately in terms of what in terms of people almost breaking their necks and dying trying to walk across crates Oh, no, no, no. That's crazy. Have you seen it? No. I, I try to limit what I um, watch and listen to. Well, you are one person that, that, that I've heard of recently that doesn't pay attention to that. Because everybody and their mother's doing it. Every challenge that they come up with, our people follow behind it full, full speed ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like, you know, can I, um, I used to be led by the media to like think things when I was younger. And then I got older. And once I started having kids, I realized I'm like, you know what? The media is just BS. And when you're young and dumb, you, you, you follow things you don't know. You know, you think it's right and you think it's cool. But then when you start thinking for yourself, you realize it's not right and it's not cool. And you kind of come into yourself. And I feel like I feel like with the black home and just like us as black people, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of lies being spread to divide us and to lead us lead us away from each other. I feel like the women are being told like the men don't want us as women we're being told they don't want us. Um, you know, they're choosing another race or something. But in fact, it's not that way. They're using like the basketball players, the rappers to say that, which they're only a small percent and they don't count because they're in a different league. But like an average black man, an average black woman, I feel like there is families out there, but they're not they're not posting those statistics, you know? You're right, because um, the reason why they do that is because um, a lot of sisters... When you ask them what they want out of a man or a relationship, they don't want the average black man. They want the celebrities. They want the athletes. They want the rich men. So when they see those men that they want with people of other races, they get hurt and offended. And then they blame that for every man. So they, they put their, they kind of, um, well, they, they're, they're projecting basically. So they have, what they want in their mind and then when the average black man can't measure up to a six or seven figure brother then the average black man gets looked at as nothing that's why you ask a lot of women a lot of women want a six-figure man but in the black community those percentages are very very low but if you want a middle class man, blue collar worker, somebody that's going to actually work and provide and, and bust his behind to make sure that you and yours eat. Well, you know, that's 70 percent of men that's going to make about 50 or 60 thousand dollars. But to a lot of sisters, that's not enough. And to a lot of sisters that I know that I've talked to and run across, they will talk back or disrespect that man if he tries to instill some sort of order in the relationship or in his household. And then there, then that's when the, the trigger word toxic masculinity comes about. Uh, so I guess the, we don't want to be submissive. Uh, yeah, correct. Correct. Well, I was one of those until I um, found Christ, so I can't say anything. And then when I started reading the Bible, I realized I have to like be humble and let the man lead. So... Sometimes you just don't know better. You know, we have to be taught or we have to read for ourselves. So very true. But I can I can I can almost guarantee that the man you are with or the man you married is a man that you've actually vetted enough to prove him for marriage, correct? Yes. 
But listen, yeah. I used to treat him like crap. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Well, good thing you changed, but a lot of sisters, they don't change. At least you're one of the ones that can actually admit that you'll take a good man to treat him like crap for whatever reason. And then let's say that man would have left you. Would you have been of the same mindset that you are now? No, I, I, I listen, I feel like as females, we do we do what we know we can get away with. And as soon as we know we can't get away with, any, with nothing more, we stop. So I stopped. I knew when enough was enough because I wasn't going to lose out. Ooh, powerful statement. Uh, we have a... Uh, go ahead. Hey, hey, real, real, real quick. My bad wife. I want to give her a round of applause, bro. Yeah, we gonna, like we for gonna, real. Hey, we going we gonna to get to that. I'm going to use Delisha as a, a, a bar. Oh, my goodness. No, no. Nah, nah, yeah. Look, see, the, the, y'all got to stop being scared of other women. <laughs> y'all got to stop being scared. Y'all got to tell the truth. The truth is going to help other women. Not this enabling stuff that's been going on in the media. Go ahead, Wiley. Now, I was just going to say, hey, the sister came to to some senses, uh, apparently, after reading the Bible, because she said she she did certain things up to an extent and that you was not going to lose out, meaning that you saw some type of value in the brother in order for you to stop doing the things that you were doing or treating them the way that you were treating them. Um so, you know, that, that's what I want. I was going to say, you know, a lot of sisters, they just, some of our sisters out there, they just don't get it. They will completely run the brother slap off. And then when the bills are due and, and she's going through the different uh, trials and tribulations that she's going through, it, it, it's the brother fault that, that she ran off. So, you know, uh, the sister, she said some things. Uh, so we, we, we're going to deal, but go ahead and move on, uh, uh, Matt. All right, we got uh, Duminette. Is that is that how you say it? It's Dumene. 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 Yes. Is that French? Yes, it's French. Okay. You ain't from uh Louisiana, are you? No, nah, no, nah, I'm I'm from Miami. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. So um the topic of discussion, uh did you hear everything that was discussed so far with uh Delisha and all of that? I, I caught some of what Delisha was talking about as far as uh you know, relationship with her, with the guy she's with. But um, that's about it. Okay, well, we're talking about the topic of the room. Uh, masculinity isn't toxic. It's lacking in the black family. And uh, she said, uh, you know, some heavy things. Women do what they know that they can get away with. Once they see that they can't get away with it anymore, they stop. And um, right. what was said earlier was, you know, whenever men actually stand up and be men, these trigger words like toxic masculinity are thrown out there as a way of uh, shaming a man for actually standing up and being a man. So in this society, why do you think that is? Um, I think, well, especially with the black community, I think they use those words to make... Uh, to make the family structure to be to be softer, like for example, uh, I grew up with two, a, in a two parent household, and, that, and now when I look back on my life, I, I see that as a blessing because I had a father that gave me order, and I had a mother that played her role for as far as the softer side. The and my father uh, led a household with a strong hand, and I seen that as a as a great example. And when I looked at how I grew up as a uh, how I grew up, with, and my friends, most of my friends didn't have a father, so I can see with them they were more emotional. But with me, I, I would always rationalize every situation that came up to came came up in. Depending on the situation, I don't know if I. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you 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 explained it right. I, what I gather from it is, uh, you 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 got one of them old school Haitian families, and your right. daddy didn't play no mess. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So, so his his because uh, you say you he led the household with a strong hand. 
Right. And, uh, I was raised by my father too. For a long time, he was a, a single parent, so he raised me by himself for a while. Um, that that strong hand, and uh, and I, I can definitely relate about you know the friends that you have that didn't have as much right uh, so order I'm- and structure and, and uh, restrictions as you. Uh, we see right. how they turned up versus us. So right. why do you so, would you call that toxic? What what, what your father did? No, because uh, it gave me a sense of direction. So when I grew up with my friends, I I, pro- I felt out of place a lot of the time because they would get emotional a lot of the times, and I would always ask myself that: Why would they get emotional with something so petty? When the same situation happened to me, I would just brush it off. It was, it was never a big situation for me. But it took me a long time to realize that most of my friends, probably about 90% of them, grew up in a single-parent home with their mother raising them. And, and, my, and whenever I go home, my father would give me guidance. You no, know, whenever you, for example, whenever you... Uh, Whenever you cross paths with a stranger, always say good morning or make sure before you leave out the house, before you go to downtown, make sure you dress properly. Uh, Keep a newspaper in your hand so they don't think that uh, you're a criminal or something. Little stuff like that. Or, you know, always rational, always assess the situation. But but on on the flip side of it, my friends... Whenever they were presented a certain situation that was challenging, they would get emotional or angry or try to emulate what they seen on TV. Mm. Yeah, that's that's uh, that is most of the time what happens with a lot of us here in this country. The television raises us. Our mama do the best she can, but she can't really do that much because she's too busy working. So, yeah, that two-parent household right. is definitely needed. Yeah. Um, hey, no, can, I, can, I, can I say something, something? Yes, sir. Um, because that's those, those old school family values that we once had. Um, mama at home taking care of the kids, cooking, washing clothes, taking care of the house, cooking dinner. And dinner's done. And nobody could eat until daddy got home. You know what I mean? We don't have that no more. Um, if one of the kids got out of line, mama would say, I'm going to tell your daddy. And the kids, I know myself because I had my dad in the house. I got in trouble and my mother say, you know, when your daddy get home, you know what's going to happen. I would, I would beg her not to tell him because that fear for him was embedded in me because he was the man of the house. Uh, Ibuka, can you get me Sirach chapter 3 and start at verse 1? This is why I say this. Um, the man, the black man has been depreciated here in America. You know, the women, the children do not respect or fear black men. Okay? With his father. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear me, your father. O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. You see that? When a father is in the household, don't the household feel more safer? Because when no. a woman is in the house by... No. No. Exactly. No. Well, when, when we, we, we're going we're gonna to get to y'all. You, you, y'all well, let me, can wait. Trust me, your let time me, is fine. Right. Let me finish what I'm saying. Because at one point in time, the men were in the house. And if somebody tried to break in the house, Mama ain't getting up with a frying pan going doing nothing. Daddy yes, getting up with that thing. Daddy getting up with that thing to go see what's going on at the door. So it, that's how that's how Francis, it went down. You can just calm yourself down. We're gonna get to Please. It. That's how it went down. The man is the protector of the home. Finish that off of Google. Let's read all the way to verse two. Hear me, your father, O children. And do thereafter that ye may be safe. For the Lord have given the father honor over the children. And have come. The Lord, hold on, dude. The Lord has given the father honor 
over the children. It takes a man to raise a boy, okay? It takes a man to be in the house so a young woman can know how to choose the right man. That's why these sisters out here today, they don't know how to choose a man because they didn't have a father in their life to show them what man they need to choose. Read on the book. And have confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. And have confirmed authority of the mother over the sons. This is order. God has always had the structure of a, 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 a father and a mother in the household. Get, real quick, give me Psalms 82 and 5. Let me show you what's going on in the earth today. This is why we have black women. Soon the black man say something that they know is right. They got to say something to, to rebuttal it or try to disprove it or just ne neglect what's being said. But we're going to see what the Bible say. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 5. Uh -huh. They know not, neither will they understand. And they walk they on know. in darkness. Uh-huh. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. You see that? All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Everything is flipped upside down. Now the women is leading the black community. And look at our community. Look at our young men today as a result of single parent homes that's being led by the women. The proof is in the pudding. So you must have a, 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 a masculine, a manly, a man's man, that's what we call it, a man's man in the house to be a husband, to be a father, so that way the black community can come back together as a nation. The black, Hispanic, and Native American community can come back as the nation of Israel. Because if you don't have the man in place, you don't have nothing. The nation will not survive. I mean, out. All right, very well said, very well said. We have next, we have uh, Ann Ting. Yeah. Yes, my brother. All right, so what's your thoughts on the topic? Masculinity isn't toxic, it's lacking in the black family. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, well, it's, it's definitely, definitely lacking uh, in the black home. And I think we all know why, you know, this happened. Uh, but, I mean, to fix the problem, you know, we all know how to fix it. And the most is the only one could fix this because uh, we seem to stray away from, you know, our God. And we adopt to European or Eurocentric, you know, idea and ideologies. These things are not working for us. So even though we're trying to be included in the society, it's never going to happen. They're never going to allow the black race to ever be above them. So on a level playing field, we'll never be equal as them, never. It doesn't matter how many generations is going to be in this country or around the world, as long as you're black, we'll never be on par with them. They are making sure that we stay exactly where we are. So if we're familiar with uh, Deuteronomy 28 through 68, then we understand why, what the curse is. And it's going to destroy everything. I mean, our home, our kids, not going to respect us, uh, our women won't respect us. Uh, all of this is because of the curse. So we have to get back to our creator in order to repair this. He's the only antidote for all of this. We can't depend on politicians. We can't voting won't do it. None of these things will do it. The only thing can fix this is the creator. He's the only one could fix it. Family cannot work without love. And if you don't have God in your family, then there's no... There's no unity in the family at all. So we, we, you know, we could unite with each other. How is it going to happen when this family is apart? Brothers against brothers, sister, cousin against cousin. If, you know, 10 family in one community and they're all together, everybody is on the same page. We're, we're able to unite. We're able to function as a group. It can't happen because we're not together at all. And with the basic love that we're supposed to have, we don't have that, basically... It won't work. So, I mean, I love this topic you guys talking about. It would be good, but I think we all have to find the creator first. That's our duty here. And I think everything will repair itself after. All right. Very well said. Very well said. Francis, what's your thoughts on the topic? 
I don't think it's lacking. It is the wrong type of masculinity that's going on. Like the shit y'all talking about. <laughs> what y'all talking about is what got our young people in therapy <laughs> and in anger management because oh. y'all dad was way too hard on you and then your mom was too soft and then you want to talk about like women not not doing enough. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Mm, and the men really having to be so in, in the household. Hold on. So, I'm not done. So, uh-uh. so and so this Francis. man over here talking so, about so that you Francis. need so uh-uh. you need a man so to have so fr- see, see, see this right here? Babylonian woman. Y'all not gonna sit up here and just run your mouth. Those, those those green dots by our names, we're moderators. That means when you talk and we have something to say, we're gonna say it. So this is the thing. Our type of masculinity, there is no masculinity in the black community. When it comes down to it, that's why a lot of our sisters... No, there's toxic masculinity. Not not all of them, but a lot of our sisters feel the need to actually over-talk, overpower, emasculate, shame, insult the black man. Why? Because y'all have been given too much power here. To where when a black man actually starts to speak the truth, now y'all want to try to shame him into what he's saying. No, it's not our type of masculinity. There is no masculinity. Let me get 1 Kings 2 and 2. Because a lot of times, the the our dads grew up too hard, our mothers grew up too soft. That's very incorrect. Our fathers actually instilled order and structure, which a lot of young men don't have today. Why? Because they're raised by women. So a lot of these young men are growing up to be young women. That's why, like like the brother, uh, who was that, uh, Dumene, that's why he said a lot of people, a lot of our men, they grow up emotional. Why? Because women are emotional and women are raising the men. Get that First Kings 2 and 2. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. A lot of I people don't know, A lot of people don't know how to choose a man or what a man is supposed to do because they don't know what a man is supposed to be. Read that. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So King David is telling his son Solomon, show yourself a man. Be strong and show yourself a man. And how you do that? Read that. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So being a man is actually keeping the commandments of God. And in keeping the commandments of God, this is one of the things that you have to do. Go to Genesis 18 verse 19. Genesis chapter 18 verse chapter Chapter 18, verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. So one of the things that our forefather Abraham did was he commanded his children and his household. According to what? According to the laws of God. The problem is y'all dealing with men that ain't keeping the laws of God. They don't know the laws of God. So the men that y'all have in y'all mind when we're speaking, those was those 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 little boys that y'all chose or those messed up men that y'all grew up looking at. We're not denying that they don't exist. But what we're telling you is the men that y'all have not seen, they're here now. Now, you have to listen to these men because they're coming out of the Bible. And they're going to command their nation and their household and their people in order to do the commandments of God. If you don't want to listen to that, if you don't want to hear that, well, try your hand at what's been going on now. Try your hand at these emotional, effeminate little boys that's walking around with guns, pistols and weapons in their hand. Try your hand at that. Try your hand at the men that are. Uh, putting on the front for all social media and smashing every woman that they see, getting them pregnant and ain't sticking around. Try your hand at that. Hey, hey Nolan, can I can yes, I back sir. you up real quick? Hey, Booker, yes, give me um, give me First Timothy three and five. I'm gonna show you a word that women hate to hear. 
the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Y'all see what the Bible says? The Bible says if a man don't know how to rule, rule his house. A woman, these black women today, they don't want no man ruling over them. But God said if a man don't know how to rule his own house, how he going to take care of the church of God? How he going to help lead the nation of Israel? He can't do it. He starts at home first. But if you don't have a man in place, what you going to have the woman to rule the house? Woman can't rule the house. Okay, like I said before, when a woman is ruled the house, your boys are in games, your daughter's on TikTok twerking, they're in the strip club. That's the result of a woman leading the household. But the Bible says, read that verse again. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? God always had it set up for the man to be in place to rule over his house. That means everybody, um, the woman, the children are under subjection to him. That's the way it goes. Like James Brown said, this, this is a man's world. And you women, and, and you got to get in order with that. That's just what it is. I mean, up. All right, next up. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I just want to touch a few points that, uh, like, uh, what what Miss just said, and also add on to what what you said. I mean, um, like like Miss said, they don't have a black man in mind, but they do have a man on their mind. It's just it's just not the black man, all right? Because the men that they have in mind are the men that have them set up in society to rule over the the the, the man of their own nation right now. So when we step up or when a black man does step up to try to rule this house, like the brothers bringing out, they see that as toxic masculinity. All right. But it's not toxic masculinity when they're receiving the benefits from the man who put them in the section eight or gave them the best job over over the brother who was qualified to get the job. And, and, and now when you see that brother, he's looked down on or he's frowned upon because of what society has made him out to be. What our women don't realize is that a role reversal has taken place. And because they lack the information that is going to make them aware that they think that how society is currently running, how the men are currently being treated in society is just, it's the norm. That's just the way the black man is. It's, it, they take no account or no knowledge of what has happened to not only them, but the black man here in this country and what continues to happen because of a lack of knowledge uh, that we're bringing out according to the, according to the scriptures. So just wanted to hit on that real quick. That's all. All right. Next up we had Courtney. Hello. Hello. So what are your thoughts on the subject? Okay. So my thoughts on the subject is, you guys want us to follow a black man, which is not a problem, but we need to follow black men who are actually going to lead because most men out here are not leaders, for one. For two, my dad has been in my life for all my life, and he has, you know, lived in the household with us. Um, every Sunday he was going to church, but every other day out the week he was beating on my mom. So is that the black man that I'm supposed to follow? You already know the answer to that. Your situation is very anecdotal to what the topic is. Your situation, very unfortunate, is not the image of all black men. And if it is the image of all black men in your head, then you kind of got to go back to the scriptures that we read earlier on what a man actually is. A man that is going to keep the commandments, guide his household according to the commandments of God. Inside of the commandments, can we go to 1 Timothy chapter 3 again? Yes, sir. From the top. Uh, start, start at verse uh, 5 again, where, he, where you had him. At. Verse Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Matter of fact, go up to verse 3. Verse 3. Not given to wine. So this is the qualities of a bishop. A bishop is nothing but a teacher. 
So a man that teaches his household, that's guess what? He's aspiring to be that. If you're teaching your household, you can't be given to wine. You can't be a drunkard. If you, if, if you have had many in your life that were angry drunks, well, guess what? Those were not men. They fell victim to whatever happened in their life. Maybe they saw their mother get beat, and all they had was to mimic that same behavior throughout time. Doesn't give an excuse for it, just letting you know that without the laws of God, they have no direction. Read on. No striker. No striker. Meaning you're not supposed to be hitting people, especially your wife. Read on. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Uh-huh. Not, not going after money at all costs. Go ahead. But patient. Black men, we're supposed to be patient. And guess what? We teach these things to black men every single day. Every single day, there's somebody somewhere in this country teaching black men how to stand up and actually be black men. And we are seeing the change of that all over the world. Read on. Not a brawler. Once again, back to the fighting. That's not supposed to be. Read on. Not covetous. Not covetous. Always looking at what somebody else has. So the black men that we're telling you to follow are the men that are going to apply the commandments. Not the men that you've seen in your life that have done unfortunate things that you have been a witness to. Not the black men that you see out here in the street that are being unproductive and all that they're doing is trying to chase a bag, chase pants, chase uh, uh, the next big butt, trying to go get the next drugs, trying to uh, fulfill their own lust instead of building up their people. Those are not the men that we're talking about. That's why y'all sisters have to start vetting men according to what the Bible says. No matter what the man is in your life, you have to say, hmm, is he standing up to what the Bible says that a man should be doing? No. Well, then I can't go ahead and be around this man. If it's a man that you're actually dealing with or dating, y'all should know better anyway. All females know whether that dude is about something or he's not about something. Y'all all know it within like the first couple of hours of talking to this guy. Y'all know whether or not you can take him serious or whether or not you cannot take him serious. But the trip part is y'all go after your lust so much that y'all end up in situations and then y'all blame all men for it. I don't think we so, blame all men hey, for that. And let me let me get Colossians 3 and 18. Because you said, are you supposed to submit your submit to that? The Bible it explains clearly who you're supposed to submit yourself to. Read that, uh, Colossians 3, 18. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, Hold submit your... It says wives. You desire to be a wife, right? It says wives. Come on. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As it is fit in the Lord. As it is what? As it is fit in the Lord. So the, the scriptures are telling you to submit to your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. What makes this husband fit in the Lord? Get Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Because the dudes that you see on the corner with the, with, with the dope in their pocket or driving the fancy car because they've been hustling in the hood all their life, you already know he's not fit in the Lord. You already know the brother that's sleeping with three, four, five women in the neighborhood ain't fit in the Lord. You know the brother that's putting his hands on on, on, on on people? You know he ain't fit in the Lord. So what makes a man fit in the Lord? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord mm -hmm. our God. So a man is fit in the Lord when he's doing the commandments of God. Obviously what, you, what you're seeing is not a man who is submitting to the commandments of God, that and being that being your father. Yes, he's in church, but he's not learning the commandments. He definitely ain't coming home teaching the commandments if he come home putting his hands on your mother. So what you should be looking for is a man who is following the commandments of God according to the scriptures as it is written. I'm mute on mic. Go ahead, Courtney. Go ahead, Courtney. 
Okay. I don't have nothing else to say. I understand that. All right. We just want to, that's why we have rooms like this. That's why we have rooms like this. We understand that a lot of people go through a lot of things, but right now it's accountability time. Men take accountability for everything that we do. We admit that they got a lot of messed up brothers out there and we are doing our damnedest to make sure that they change their mindset. And if they don't, we are instructing y'all sisters to leave them alone. So next up on the list, we have uh, Rasheen. Am I saying that right? Yes, that's right. All right. So what are your thoughts on the subject? Hello, everyone. Um, in listening to, um, you know, I just chimed in not too long ago. Um, I feel as though I do believe God is the foundation of the home. I also believe the reason why um, black families are lacking in mas- masculinity nowadays is because modern women way of thinking has gotten away from t- traditional way of thinking because, you know, we're working and um, I'm saying we, even though my belief is different, but I'm just going to categorize myself because I'm taking accountability with my fellow women. We feel as though that um, because we're working, we don't have to um, submit to our men. We don't have to um, be our helpmate for our man. Um, we don't have to cook clean because we're working like he's working. Um, I believe that submission has been taken out of the word submission has been taken out of context. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And I feel as though the traditional values need to come back into our modern day world in order for our households to become um, strong and, and the respect that the men deserve needs to come back into our homes. Hey, you are, you are absolutely right. Hey, Vuka, get, get the Willie Lynch letter. Mm-hmm. Go to the part, to, to the healthy dependency part. Cause what you're saying is, is, uh, is right. And, um, our sisters, they don't understand but they've been used. They've been used. Y'all, y'all sisters, y'all have to understand this. Y'all have been used. Men in this society, we are used like pawns. Women in this society are used like knights. If you ever play chess, a knight, they move in a very odd way. But they can move a lot further than a pawn. And you can you can you can use them, but also you can sacrifice them as well. So watch how watch how the white man actually sacrificed black women in the uh, feminist movement and the the civil rights movement. Read that. You got it, Booker. This is the Willie Lynch letter, page sixteen. The breaking process of the African woman. Last paragraph. We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigger apart and bullwhipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. So right here, we have a lynching, uh, public humiliation, um, a show of force that shows, hey, this man that right here that you look up to, he can't protect you. That's why we have world star hip hop that shows the most ignorant activities of black men you have um social media facebook instagram that repeatedly shows black men being murdered by police being murdered by each other um you have the effeminization of black men that is rampantly going public everything that happens to black men they make sure to publicize it whenever a black man stands up for his people They take away, especially if he's uh, a celebrity, they take away his endorsements. They take away his money. They uh, they threaten his family. Um, They they come out of the woodworks with women that he may or may not have slept with in the past. And they come out with allegations. All of these things are used exactly like strapping uh, one of our brothers to four horses and pulling them apart and bull whipping us to the point of death. It's the same exact thing. Read on. By her being left alone, unprotected, 
with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from her natural psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. And that's where our women are right now. That's what Rasheen was talking about. Because beforehand, a lot of our sisters would have a dependency on the black men. Why? Because y'all looked at us as leaders. But slowly but surely, that image of black men has been demolished in your head. So when you look at a black man saying, you got to be submissive to your husband, you're thinking about all of the negative black men that you've seen in your life. You're thinking about Tyrone, who got your cousin pregnant and then messed with your other cousin and got her pregnant and he ain't with neither one of them. You're thinking about Ray Ray, who all he want to do is flash money all day. You're thinking about Pookie, all he want to do is play video games all day. Those, these are the these are the black male images that we see. And how we know it's true is, um, I don't know, uh, Wise, Mish, uh, I know E was on there that day when the, the, the brothers from Africa told us what the image of black male Americans and black female Americans are around the world. Was y'all on that? Uh, I, w- I was. They they told us that the image of black men and black women worldwide is based off of reality TV shows, hip hop videos, and gangster movies. So when they watch Juice, when they watch Boys in the Hood, when they watch Belly, um, when they watch Paid in Full, everybody outside of this country believes that all black Americans act that way. They truly believe it until they come over here and, you know, they meet some, some of us and we're not like that. But outside of this country, having looking from the outside in, that's the image of black men. So when you look at that, what do you think it is to the people that are actually in this country that don't go to our neighborhoods that don't that, that that aren't around us on a day-to-day basis to know that there are a lot of us that are upstanding citizens and we take care of our families and we do all of these things. Why do you think they concentrate on the 15% of men that are not taking care of their kids, but not the 85% that are? Why do you think they're looking at the the 12 to 15 or 20 percent of men that are in jail, not the 80 percent that are not in jail? Yes, we fill up 90% of the prisons, but guess what? It's not 90% of us that are locked up. So that black male image has left our sisters, just like back then in the Willie Lynch letter. It's left y'all in a frozen, independent state. Frozen meaning you're not going nowhere. If any sister on here can tell me how successful the black woman has been since our households have been broken, I need to hear that. Exactly. This was by design. And it's, it's obvious that the design is working because they have, they have subjects like this, toxic masculinity. What 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 kind of man should I submit to? What kind of man should I be with? When submission is is a is a trigger word nowadays for a lot of our women. Mm. It's a trigger word. To say submission is a trigger word. Go ahead, wise. Y'all was just saying if a book of kid flip over to uh page nine, if you were done with that that part of the uh what you was reading on page sixteen. Yes, sir, I was done. All right, go to page nine. And read the first paragraph. Because everything that Nolan is saying, we all know it to be true. I mean, a lot of us want to deny the reality of of what we live in because we want to we want to paint a new reality for the for for our lives here in in this land. But the reality is, is that we have been (laughs) we've been made we've been made slaves. Our minds have been flip flopped and the way that we're living is, is turmoil. 
But in order to fix it, we got to change our mindset. And that's the fearful thing that our people have. But read that top of verse, uh, first paragraph on, on page nine. Page nine. The black slave, after receiving this indoctrination, shall carry on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Now, how long has it been since these same principles in this book have been applied to us in slavery? These same, every principle in this book has been applied to us in slavery. Our minds have been completely flip-flopped, completely changed. We know nothing about who we are. We know nothing about uh, uh, the respect and who the black man really is on this earth and the role that the man and the woman is supposed to play in a home. We have no idea about that. Give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. This is why the scriptures say this. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but so be ye trans... This world has changed the, the, the mindset of our women. Simply like he said, by giving them freaking wick, you know, public housing. Things that a man is, is naturally supposed to go out and provide for his family, but because he's in this condition in this society where he can't get a leg up and she can take alternate routes to get to where she needs to be at just by pushing the black man to the side, then most of our women take that route. Read it again from the top. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the you, only thing that's going to renew our mind is what's in the scriptures. We've tried everything. You had the women's rights movements in the in, in the early 1900s. That ain't work. It completely changed our neighborhoods, put the black man on the bottom, gave women these rights so they could be equal and, and, and walk around as though they're the man. Now, masculinity in the home is a problem. But we got women raising boys that are standing on the corners with no fathers, pushing all the dope in the neighborhood, sleeping with multiple sisters in the neighborhood, but for a man to, to, to come in and straighten that young man out, especially with the laws of God, that's that that, that that's toxic, toxic masculinity. The Bible says we gotta change our minds. That's what has to be changed. And the only thing that's going to change it is the words of God. When we will start applying these scriptures to our lives, we will change our lives, our family lives, and our community's lives. That's the solution. But how many women and, and, and even brothers, how many of us are really going to uh, 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 take hold of what we have in these scriptures that were given to us, use it, and apply it? That is yet to be known, but you know. I mean, well, hey, you know what's crazy? Uh, toxic masculinity is a problem, but feminine men are celebrated. Yeah, that's a heavy point, bro. Mm. So moving on, uh, we appreciate you, Rasheen, for your input. Uh, Unknown T. Yeah, um, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. And, um, I've listened to all what you guys have said. Masculinity is intoxic. Um, it's lacking in the black um, family. <clears throat> this is particularly very, very true. Um, I believe there's an intentional agenda, really, um, to remove the black man from his family for the crack down of the black family, for the disorganization of the black family. This is very, very intentional. And as such, they know that if the black family is together and stand as one, there's going to be progress. So they've done this in several ways. Introduction of crack to the communities and, you know, massive um, sentencing of men to jail. Um, telling um, our women that they do not need men. Um, something I've noticed very, very um, recently is that in truth, it is actually only in the black community that I hear women say we don't need men. I, I, it is, it is very, very hard to hear it from 
um, Caucasians or from Indians or from Chinese because they know the importance of men in their society. They know that men form the building blocks and men form uh, the very foundation on which um, society is built. And as such, you need men to lead. And for a man to lead in God's way, it, it must mean that that man must know God. And for him to lead his wife and lead his family, it means that he must understand the purpose of God in his life. Um, I think it was um, Nola Matt that was talking about um, the perspective that Africans and other people have about um, African Americans, particularly. In truth, you are very, very correct. You know, there's something called me media representation. Um, the perspective or the view of African Americans, both male and female, from those outside um, the Americas, is that a very large percentage of the men, a very large percentage, and you said it's not even up to 10%. But then the view is that a very large percentage are in jail. The view is that um, a very large percentage engage in the sale of crack. Um, the view is that, you know, there's just destabilization and everywhere in black America, there's either um, violence that is plagued. And, you know, we are just tagged as people um, filled with unrest. So I think for real, for our society, and for us to have a progressive family, we need to start rewriting our stories. We need to start um, promoting ourselves intentionally. Um, our women need to understand that we are not their enemies. Rather, we are the best thing that they can have. And as such, it is going to. It can only benefit us if we actually work together, if we're actually living together. And for them not to uh, believe that, oh, I don't need no man to do anything. Like I said, it is only in our community. It is very, very difficult to hear a white woman say such, or a Chinese woman, or an Indi or um, someone from India, because they know the importance of men. And we've seen how these societies have progressed. We've seen how far they've gone compared to our own society. So when we do things for so long and we're not seeing any results, we should ask ourselves, what are we doing wrong? And how can we make it better? I keep telling people, black people are at the bottom tier. But people don't believe. We, 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 we just think, oh, because we have access to some minimal fund. When we talk about people that have assets and things that can make life better, generational wealth, you, I, you can hardly count um, uh, black people and black families, you know, amongst them. There's just one quick um, quote I want to read because we're talking about uh, men being more feminine and uh, women being more uh, masculine, which is actually the very polar opposite. Men are supposed to be masculine. Men are supposed to go out there to provide, to protect for the woman and for the um, children. The truth of the matter is that nature has, nature has descended on us what we're supposed to do traditionally. Now we're trying to rewrite... Um, we're trying to rewrite our biology and rewrite what nature is all about. And we're doing ourselves a great disservice. So there's a quote, and it says, Hard times, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. That just points towards uh, what a man is supposed to be. You're supposed to be, um, you know, it does not mean you should not show emotions, but then, you're supposed to put yourself through and through because as a leader, you're going to go through a lot. And then when you show emotions, it means that in the face of adversity, you're going to back down. And then I'm going to read it again. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Now we are making men more feminine. When it is time to face hardship, and overcome, you have them chicken out. Why? Because they've not seen that um, that role model. They've not seen that figure that they can actually point to, and you know probably um, seek mentorship from. And then we're unable to progress. So um, I'd like to enjoin everyone, particularly our women, 
this is not the time for us to keep running away from the men and keep the, and them um, distancing ourselves. Rather, this is the time for us to start building a strong foundation, a strong family. Because I really don't know where we are going to with the way, you know, the rhetorics are out there. Thank you. Hey, you you said a lot of powerful things. And that quote that you read, where's that from? Um, so it's a quote I just have I just have it pasted in my wall. So it's I've, I've always had it for a while. Okay, okay. It's, hey, it's a, online though. It's online. That's a that's a powerful quote. Um and that's very, very true. You know, weak men do create hard times. It it you know <laughs> it's it's a uh it's a it's a it's a cycle, you know what I'm saying? Um but what you did say was very, very much on point. Um, and I'd like to thank you for clarifying the point that I made about the image of, um, our black men and women outside of this country, because, uh, there was a sister, um, and I do appreciate you, sis, that, uh, private messaged me and said that she received, she's from Uganda. She received the same pep talk when she moved to the UK, you know, um, about the black men and, you know, black women and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's a shame, but give me Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. This is what's going to start the change in the image of our people. The book of Psalms chapter 94, verse 16, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? So, or who will so God is asking who is going to rise up for him against the evildoers? Read on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Or who's going to stand up for God against the workers of iniquity? Meaning, God is asking us a question. Who is going to stand up for us and actually, well, who's going to stand up for God and actually help to get our people in order? That's going to require correction. That's going to require us telling people, hey, what you're doing is wrong, according to the Bible. Now, the Bible says to do this. This is what you should be doing. Some people call that judging, which it is. But you got to understand that judging is not condemning. Judging is basically warning. That's all we're doing. We're warning our people to stop doing the evil that you're doing because there's a consequence for it. If you spread your legs and you have sex with a man, there's the consequence could be you get pregnant and you don't want to, or you get a disease that you don't want to have, or you just stuck with some crazy Negro for the rest of your life. Everything has a consequence. There's an, as a reaction for every action. So when we look at the Bible, the Bible is asking who is going to stand up for God and stand up against those people that are doing wrong. When you stand up against those people that are doing wrong, you have to correct them with the Bible. And that's what a lot of our men are not doing. They're not correcting people according to the Bible. Because what our men have started came from Tupac. Only God can judge me. And then everybody else adopted that same ideology in their head. You can't do nothing. God, Only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. That's not even in the Bible. Let me get uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 15. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. So you're not supposed to be unrighteous in judgment. An unrighteous judge would say, hey, I see you acting effeminate, but guess what? I'm going to allow you to keep doing that. And then I'm going to demonize somebody else if they disagree with what you're doing. They're pushing sexual activities onto our children. And if you disagree with it, they judge you as if you're the one that's wrong. That's an unrighteous judge. We're not supposed to do that, but read on. 
Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, meaning, but in righteousness. Meaning, when it said don't respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, meaning it doesn't matter who that person is. If they're doing wrong, they could have a million dollars in the bank. You're wrong. Or they can have one dollar in the bank and they're doing wrong. You're wrong. That's why the scriptures say he that stealeth, let him steal no more, but let him labor with his hands. Get a job. You don't have to steal. That's why it commands them that be rich, be given to hospitality, willing to communicate. Willing to help out. Read on. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. That's why the Bible says in righteousness. And wise read it earlier. Righteousness is keeping the laws. So in keeping the laws, according to the laws, you judge your neighbor. If your neighbor smoking cigarettes, you give him the law that says don't defy your temple. Your neighbor is sleeping with everybody in the neighborhood. You give them laws about fornication. Your neighbor is, is, is having boyfriend, girlfriend. You give them laws about what it is to be married. That's what's going to get our image to change in this world. When black men actually stand up and start to do that. You got some? Yeah, I got some. Uh, I was looking at this brother. Uh, and he was talking about the young sister that runs track, uh, Sakari Richardson. And uh, she just came back to the track field and she lost. She came in last place. And the brother was saying, you know, people making this big thing about it because she lost like that. And he was saying, you know, we trying to crown her the queen of track when she ain't really won nothing. But he said this. He said, I get it, though, because she looked like us. Every black girl, like, she represents us. Right? And th then you have the young thugs and the, the little Wayne. You know what I mean? Now you got the Wayne Wade promoting his son to be a girl. You know, our, our image as a whole has been totally destroyed. Um, Ibuka, give me that in Hosea 3 and 4 real quick. When you say that sister, she, she's running trash. She got blonde hair, the long fingernails, which she can't have white herself, the long eyelashes. They saying that's the black woman. That's the image. That's going back to what the brother said how the other nations look at us. We've been totally westernized and we don't take it to a whole nother level. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter three, verse four. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king or without a prince or without a sacrifice and without an image. Without an image, right? First and foremost, we was given that white image of Jesus Christ, Sergio Borgia, Charles Manson, right? And with us believing that the Messiah looked like that, now we have changed our image. We got, we going blonde in our hair, okay? Wearing fake nails, fake eyelashes. Men want to put on the dresses and the skirts. You want, you want to, your 12 year old boy come to you and say, I want to be a girl and you accept that. We, our image has Totally change in the black community. That's why the other nations look at us and they wag their heads because they know we are destroyed people. But this this is what we have to do. Give me Zephaniah two and one. The book of Zephaniah, chapter two, verse one. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are a nation that's not desired, the Black Hispanic and Native Americans. We, that nation, is not desired. But it's going to take the Black family, the Hispanic family, the Native American Indian family, to come back together under God's law. We have to, we have, we have to come back to the image that the Bible say we are. Black man, we the gods of the earth. Black woman, you are the princesses. You are, you are our wives. You are our mothers. We have to come back to that mindset. Okay, we got to come out of this, oh, we, we from the hood, we from the projects. You know what I'm saying? I want to play ball, I want to play football, I want to be the hood star. We got to come out of that mindset. Okay, because this, this uh, America has not been our dream. It's been our nightmare. Okay? We've been destroyed here in this melting pot. 
we trying to get out of the pot. So we have to change our whole mindset on getting back to God's laws and letting the man lead the nation. Women, children, you follow. I mean, very well said. Very well said. All right, we got cool on stage. Cool shot. What's your what's your thoughts on the topic? Cool, you might be on mute. Cool shy. Must be from Shy Town. Cool going once. Cool going twice. All right. Well, look, y'all, I realize, you know, we got a lot of brothers that are going to be traveling very early in the morning. Uh, so definitely want y'all brothers to get y'all rest. So do we have any uh, final words from Mish, Wise, E? Uh, e, you got anything? If not, uh, I just wanted to land back real quick off of the left. Okay. Off of the last thing that uh that Mish said, and then you know, we can go ahead and shut it down because it was it went all the way back into letting the man lead, and that's that that all falls under us understanding the order in the household. So first, let's get uh First Corinthians eleven and three. The book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse three. But I would have you know. That the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Just that alone, if we lined, aligned ourselves with that first, brothers and sisters marry, and let the man who is keeping God's commandments lead the home according to the scriptures, that alone will resolve <laughs> some of the problem because they can resolve all of it but it's going to resolve a good portion of the problems that we have in our communities all right we got to understand that the man who is masculine according to the word of god is the rightful owner of the earth all right he's the he's the one that sets the standard in the home he's the one that sets the standard in the community and that's the problem that we have in our community today. Today, we don't. Our, our children are, are stuck on the street. They're on the corners, and they don't have zero guidance. You know who their guidance is? Like uh, Mesh was bringing up, they're setting up Lil Nas X as, as an idol or, or, or as a, a a figure for our younger generation to follow. When we look out into society today. That's exactly what we see. You can't go nowhere and not see. Uh, uh, it's like a landslide. Uh, uh, effeminate young men coming up in our society because they're being raised in homes where uh, uh, the masculine portion is being presented to them by a woman who is not masculine. So now they grow up like we've been saying the whole time with these emotions and they end up on the corner. As soon as they get into something, they go right, they, they run to their emotions, blah, blow the next brother head off. And this has been a perpetual cycle like we read out of the uh, Willie Lynch letter that has continued for hundreds and thousands of years. We got to break the chain. Breaking the chain, just marriage alone will start to break the chain of this in our community. All right? With that, I'll mute, I'll mute out. I don't want to rant on too long. I have a question. All right, go ahead, Alicia. Um, do you think all this is like an agenda because there, there's been several rooms with like black women who like hate black men and stuff and you think there's an agenda at the end of the day with the white man because I grew up in Florida and growing up in Florida I've never seen so many multiracial couple when I say multiracial like black women to white men and now I go back and it's all multiracial couples like and it, it was never promoted like this when I was a kid, especially in Florida. And I was just wondering, is there an agenda? Because even when you look at the race form, you see other. And then when you see these kids, they look other. Like you can't explain it. 
So I'm just wondering if it's just an agenda behind it to make, you know, to divide us. Yes, yes, yes. It, it most definitely is. I'm going to give you two scriptures. Uh, one, give me Numbers 1 and 18. Uh, because when you see a lot of, of our women with uh, other nations, they could be white, Chinese, East Indian, whatever. If they're a black woman and they're with that other nation, they are raising up children that are of that other nation. So if it's a white woman, I mean, if it's a white man and a black woman, that child is of that white man because of this scripture. Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So a pedigree is a bloodline. When you declare your pedigree, you're declaring who your father is. So if your father is a white man, but your mother is a black woman, guess what? You are the seed of a white man. You are a white man. According to the scriptures, you are the seed of that white man. Just like if there was a black man and a white woman, that child would be of the seed of that black man. So it's, it's, it's definitely one of the many tools of um, depopulization, you know, because once you have what you call what they call mixed races, you have a lot of confusion. Um, one of our brothers calls them mixed nuts, because when you have um, a, what they call a biracial child, that child grows up confused because they don't know if they belong on one race or if they belong on the other race. And nine times out of 10, they tend to go toward the race that isn't black, whether the mother is black or the father is black. They, they tend to go towards the other side rather than their black side. Now they adopt their black side and fully commit to it once they're treated like the Negro that they look like, and then they just say, well, I can't change it. So I might as well just rock with my black people like everybody else. But go to um, Judith chapter five, verse 20 and 21. So just, just to show you the interracial aspect of it. Yes, yeah, definitely an agenda. And this is the main reason why, because you have to understand that in history, uh, white folk have taken our book, and have used it against us. They found out what our source of power was, which was the law, statutes, and commandments of God, and said, okay, if I can keep them away from those laws, I can remain on top. And this is good. these scriptures are going to explain that. Read that. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Uh, just so you know, Judith is in the 1611 King James Bible. The King James Bible originally had 80 books. Not 66, as everybody else has. So uh, if you're not familiar with the book of Judith, it is in the 1611 King James Version Bible. All right. And it's in a book called the Apocrypha. Read that. Verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So this was a man. There was not of our nation, but he knew of our nation's history. And he said, hey, if these people are sinning against their God, we can overtake them. Remember, if we are sinning, meaning breaking God's laws, if we as a nation are breaking God's laws, we can be overtaken because we don't have help. We don't have protection. Read on. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. So that's what but, he knew about our nation. Now watch what else he knew. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them and we become a reproach before all the world. Because they know if we're keeping the commandments of God, if we're doing what we're supposed to do, according to our God, they know that they don't have a fighting chance in hell. And this particular person knew that they would become a reproach, meaning an example of what not to do, because look what happened to the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt had the Israelites in captivity for 400 years. God sent 10 plagues on them and completely annihilated and destroyed them. 
And guess what? That that 10 plague story went worldwide. Everybody on the face of the planet knows about the 10 plagues of Egypt. And they know that, wow, their God actually defended them. These people are something special. We can't defeat them. But then somebody figured out, hey, if we keep them in sin, if we keep them away from the laws of their people and their God, then we can overtake them. That's why we as the strongest people were able to get taken down by some of the weakest people on the face of the planet. And yes, it is a it's not a conspiracy, but it is an agenda. It's definitely an agenda to to promote uh, interracial marriages. That's why you see a lot of these commercials have interracial marriages because they don't want the black man with the black woman. And when I say black man with black woman, I'm talking about Hispanics and Native Americans as well. They don't want us together. They want us to be separate. And the more the more that we remain separate, the more that they continue to rule on the face of the planet. But yes, you are absolutely right, sis. It is definitely a uh, an agenda. And, but we as men, we are standing up against that agenda. And y'all sisters can join us in standing up against that agenda. I think most females don't even realize it. And when I say the white men you're talking to, they look so awkward. It's like awkward looking. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes. So, they ugly behinds don't deserve to be with like black women. And genetic <laughs> defaults, you know? What I mean? It's weird. Yeah. Like, they're trying to okay. save their... It's like the only way to save their race to get normal looking kids, I guess. I don't know. You was about to say something wise? Well, no, nah, I was just agreeing with her. They look like a bunch of aliens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they do. They do. And they don't shower. They don't bathe. And that, that's because <laughs> they are aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are They are genetically defective. That's why the sun is killing them. But um, we do want to thank everybody for their participation tonight. Um, y'all have a safe rest of your week. And uh, last but not least, remember, follow the speakers online. Follow the moderators because you can't follow Biblical Smoke anymore. Clubhouse has uh, stopped that. And also follow us on Twitter at Biblical Smoke and hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter uh, to let us know your thoughts on tonight's topic. All right. Don't be a stranger to the Twitter. Don't be a stranger to following. All right. Follow all of the speakers that speak on stage so that way you're notified every time that we have a biblical smoke going on. All right. So with that, we'll give you all a Thanos snap.